Now in this video, I want to show you a couple tips and tricks about setting up your pedals, the different tensions, the distance, the beat or height and stuff like that. Because it is important after all, these are what's playing what our feet are trying to do, right? So you want that to translate properly into your drumming. A little disclaimer, before I had these Axis double pedals, these are the AL2 longboards. I played the Tama Iron Cobra Power Glide pedals. Those are dual chain driven and these are a like direct link system. So it was quite it was quite different going from chain to direct drive because there was a lot less slack per se in the movement of the footboard. Basically what I'm trying to say is that you don't need really expensive pedals to be a good double pedal player. I played on the Iron Cobras for the better part of a decade and I, I still have them but they're in a bunch of pieces because I, I managed to break them and uh, they're no longer usable. The first thing we're gonna hop into here, so let me take this out. I'm gonna show you guys spring tension. As you can see, they're pretty tight. So this thing here is called a micro tensioner. And the more you turn this thing, the more it's gonna tighten here. So basically I have this thing about halfway up and this is on my slave pedal. And it's actually pretty tight by hand, but I want it to match my right one. Even though my right foot is stronger, I feel like my spring tension should be equal because my feet should be equal. And that's what we're trying to accomplish in this course. So here is the main pedal here. You can see the spring tension is about the same on this one. This is just to help the second micro tensioner is to help compensate for the loss of power in this drive shaft. So there's just a little bit of tension on here to, to help with the, the, the lag, so to speak. So the thing that I want to talk about spring tension is that the more you tighten up your springs, so the tighter the springs are on your double pedals, the less control you're gonna have because basically the pedal is like as tight as possible. You're gonna have all the rebound coming back every time you lift up your foot and it's gonna detect every subtle little movement you have on the footboard. So when you tighten the springs like that, sure you can go faster, but you're not gonna have as much control. You gotta try and find the happy medium in between and that's exactly why I'm playing, you know, like between the highest tension and the lowest tension. So it's about a medium tension, I would say. Now, as far as foot positioning goes, you can see where it's worn out here. I put my foot about in the center of the foot pedal because I find that's where I get the most rebound. And I find where I can, you know, that's where I can play with the most ease is at the center. Sure, on the long boards, as you know, as your feet go back, you can still make a motion, but you need to make a smaller and harder motion with your foot to get the same sound out of your kick drum. And then of course, if you go in the opposite direction and you go all the way to the top of the footboard, it's gonna be even tighter and you're gonna have less control here because you don't get the full range of motion from your footboard going up and down like this. So what I like to do is, you know, find the happy medium, just like the spring tension. I wanna set my foot in the middle of the footboard and when I'm practicing, I wanna make sure that my foot stays in that position. I'm not gonna try and force my foot but I wanna be aware and I wanna look down when I'm playing and I'm, I'm exercising my feet to get better that my feet are in the same spot because if you start practicing and, and, you know, and you get used to playing down here, your muscles are gonna to adapt to that. So you wanna have full control whether your spring tension is really high or not. And you wanna be aware of where your foot is positioned on the board. Now seeing as I'm a single stroke player, I, you know, I like the long boards just because if your foot does slip down, you can still play it and you can correct yourself. I don't play heel toe, maybe like some of you do. And these long boards are really great for that, but you don't necessarily need these to be able to play double strokes. So basically what I'm trying to do is mirror my slave pedal with my main pedal. So if the beater goes and it strikes the surface of the kick drum and this here, this part here is flat. So if I'm like this and this is flat, I want this to match that. So I want the spring tension to be similar because I want my feet to be exactly like each other. Like I don't, I don't wanna make it apparent that my left foot is weaker than my right and I want it to feel the exact same underneath both pedals. Now moving on to my beater choice. I find that these pedals are pretty light and if you're playing Iron Cobras, you might not have this problem. But as you can see here in the top video, I put some weights on these because I'm using um, these wood beaters. It gives me that like, it gives me that really good attack on the bass drum that I'm looking for when I'm recording. So I compensated the weight of the beater here with some, some actual Tama weights. And it actually seems to do the trick because the pedals are light, the beaters are light. I wanna be able to feel what's under my feet so I can have more control. 
One would suppose it's similar to comparing a Formula One driver. Now the Formula One drivers, I'm not sure if you follow, but they have really thin soled shoes so they can feel the pedals underneath them. So they, you know, they can actually tell how the car is responding, which in turn helps them to perform a lot better at their job. That's the idea I want with these. So I just want to find the right weight and balance. So I get, the, I get a nice good throw on the beater and I can feel it under my feet properly. Another thing you want to consider too when it comes to pedal settings is how high the beater is on your kick drum and where exactly it sits when you're playing because you're obviously if you're playing a double pedal on a single kick drum you're going to get two different sounds because you're not going to be hitting the center of the drum so usually i try and offset it and split the difference between the beaters so let's say the center of the drum is here i'm going to split up the sound between these two beaters so it relatively gives me it's the same sound and the same feel. What you'll find too is when you're playing on a single kick drum is the rebound is going to be dependent on the tightness of your batter skin on the kick drum. Because now the thing about having a double pedal on a single kick drum is the pressure response and the rebound that you're able to attain between two beaters being on the same surface. What I mean by that is when you press down on this one it's going to push the air out and then naturally and scientifically it's going to push itself back. But if you're playing at a really fast speed and both these are hitting the same surface, you're gonna have very little response time in that pressure difference. So keep in mind, especially if you're triggering your bass drum, it's obviously gonna be tighter, so you're gonna have a lot quicker rebound. You might wanna consider changing your setting. What works well for me isn't necessarily going to fix any of your concerns. And something to keep in mind too is that the gear does not make the player. So. These did not make me a better player. If anything, it just showcased a lot of flaws that I, that I you know, never really considered before. So spend your money wisely and just remember to practice. That's the most important part. Those are my pedal settings and that is why I chose to go with those settings. Also, another thing to note too is that I play with a slightly looser bass drum because I do not trigger externally. I actually use the foot blasters. So it's an external triggering system. If you're not aware, every time the footboard connects to this, it sends a signal to your module. And that just helps with like double triggering, false triggering, stuff like that. So what that does is it allows me to get an acoustic sound at the source because I do a lot of tracking here. So instead of stuffing my kick drum full of pillows and keeping the batter head like really tight for triggering on the kick drum, I am able to loosen it off and get a nice acoustic sounding sound and then I can blend it with the triggers. So that's gonna affect my playing too because it's gonna be a lot harder to dig in for those notes. I'm not gonna have as much rebound. That's another reason why I chose the settings on these pedals that I did. Just to recap some of this, everybody's gonna have some physical differences. So what works for me might not work for you. And I just want you to keep that in mind. If you wanna copy my pedal settings then go ahead, but do not be discouraged if you do not have the same results. I'm just putting this disclaimer out because it can be frustrating, I know, and there's a lot of information out there, and a lot of the information is biased. So if it doesn't work for you, then try something that does.